There we go. You tell me if it sounds weird or something. And I'll try. <laughs> okay. Mm. Um, yeah, but uh, maybe uh, maybe you can start telling me a little bit about your yourself, uh, mm. who you are, and and where you work, and uh, about the Ukrainian Medical Association. Yeah, sure. So, uh, uh, on 2002, uh, me and uh, several young doctors uh, created uh, Ukrainian Medical Association as activists. Uh, we work as an initiative group, uh, working with uh, analytics, uh, different education projects, uh, and uh, legalized it uh, in Ministry of Justice in, I think, uh, 2000. Um, 10 or something. So, uh, and since, uh, no, I think 2008. Uh, and since uh, this the time, uh, Ukrainian Medical Association created lots of educational congresses, courses, and so on. We uh, taught uh, 30,000 Ukrainian doctors uh, on uh, different education projects. We brought uh, 70 uh, international uh, key opinion leaders to teach inside Ukraine. And so we have now the network of our alumni of these projects all over uh, hospitals of Ukraine. Uh, and uh, in 2013, uh, part of our team uh, went to a think tank of Ukrainian Medical Association called Revival Institute. So uh, Ukrainian Medical Association continued to uh, make educational projects while Revival Institute worked with uh, consulting and uh, uh, government uh, analytics. We m made different uh, <clears throat> projects, proposals uh, on uh, healthcare reform. Uh, we worked with Saakashvili governor. We worked with administration of President Poroshenko uh, and created uh, from zero the reform on health, uh, rural healthcare. Uh, which uh, was the uh, quickest reform uh, four uh, months from idea to uh, funding of uh, five uh, billion grivnas. Uh, and uh, we consulted uh, candidate Zelensky when he started uh, um, rising his campaign uh, to presidency and made lots of stuff for COVID preparedness, uh, preparedness, lots of different uh, like um, healthcare management interventions to hospitals, uh, to uh, regional administrations, uh, so on. And uh, when the war started, uh, both of our teams of Ukrainian Medical Association, where I stay as President Emeritus and uh, Revival Institute, where I'm a director, we started a, a, a Sting MD petition. Uh, it is the second time when we raise this idea. Uh, the first one was during Maidan, uh, when uh, mm, police and uh, um, supporters of uh, ex-president Yanukovych attacked medical workers on the street uh, that uh, provided care uh, to protesters. And then we use this uh, mechanism. And now the same mechanism, same idea, but of course for uh, the war. Uh, situation. The idea is to call for international medical uh, community to buy a medical researcher uh, to ask them to uh, speak to uh, uh, move their influential patients to uh, impose sanctions uh, which are important to uh, stop the war. Mm -hmm. Of course, this section, uh, this sanctions include uh, the closing of Ukrainian sky, because uh, all these days we uh, receive uh, missile attacks, bomb attacks, uh, and uh, Russian uh, forces just destroy uh, all infrastructure and lots of civilian uh, people. Uh, and uh, influential pat patients uh, can uh, move this. Uh, because all doctors uh, care for some deputies, for some ministers, for some senators, uh, so people who uh, have some weight uh, in, in system. Uh, and the second uh, part, uh, sanctions can be imposed by uh, medical community and, or uh, research community itself. 
because mm. now it is very important uh, to stop accepting Russian uh, scientific uh, articles, uh, to stop trials, uh, of clinical trials uh, in Russia and Belarus, uh, to stop um, accepting uh, Russian and Belarusian speakers uh, on congresses and stop uh, visiting their congresses. So uh, really, it's very uh, important to put the, such iron curtain, which will uh, divide the civilized world from the world of uh, Nazi and uh, uh, aggressors who are killing uh, peaceful uh, citizens. Uh, it's like the Holocaust, but uh, in action, in life. Day by day, we see this Holocaust in Ukraine. And uh, we really need uh, international support to stop it. And medical, uh, um, medical professionals and researchers uh, could act uh, in, in it and help it, uh, with it. Hmm. The, the first part you talked about there uh, in the petition is to persuade influential patients to, to impose what you call real sanctions. Yeah. But what would you say to someone who thinks this is a rather unusual approach, you know, to try to influence your own patients to do something? Uh, you know, uh, the world changed. Uh, now all the uh, intergovernment structures does not work uh, anymore. And we see even that governments does not uh, work anymore. You see that... Uh, NATO the, does not uh, support Ukraine uh, with anything, just uh, gave the petroleum, but it's nothing. Uh, you see that um, Western uh, democracy uh, does not provide Ukraine opportunity even to buy the weapon which will close the sky. Uh, those um, anti-aircraft uh, missiles uh, or... Um, or, or airplanes so we can't even buy for by money uh, this weapon which will protect our civilian uh, citizens so if uh, this structures does not work then people uh, and uh, some um, segments of people can act by their uh, own feeling uh, of good and evil and uh, we we can't uh, live anymore without establishing new structures that will uh, really work. Uh, during our first petition uh, of uh, Sting MD during Maidan, it really worked. One of uh, professor who knew one of our speakers, uh, he took his uh, doctors and nurses, they came and occupied the uh, Mm, office of senator of American senator and it was the first call of American senators to Ukrainian uh, foreign uh, ministry uh, office uh, for, with reaction uh, of United States to this uh, violence uh, against medical professionals in Ukraine it was the uh, first 10 days uh, of Maidan in Ukraine it was violence but uh, no uh, international uh, TV channels uh, were not uh, observing it and following it, and it was not uh, in agenda. So it was really first step when the medical community uh, influenced it, uh, something. Another uh, example is uh, the um, uh, one structure called International uh, Physicians Against Nuclear War. We had their delegation uh, several years ago. Uh, uh, our team uh, made their lecture for young doctors, but unfortunately, uh, these weeks uh, we uh, tried to establish some connections, uh, writing emails them, but uh, there was no reaction. Like maybe those people are out of office or something. But it's again, it's one of structures when physicians influenced something, uh, influenced uh, then signing some uh, intergovernmental agreement on decreasing nuclear uh, weapons, and they uh, obtained the uh, Nobel Prize uh, of, of Peace. So uh, there were some uh, pre precedents uh, in history, but now we really need a new one, because you see uh, the established uh, structures does not work. 
even uh, from our uh, common newsletter where we get acquainted, uh, I uh, emailed this petition to many, many uh, European uh, medical associations. Uh, most of them does not react it at all. Uh, several of them issued just statements that we are uh, concerned, uh, we stay with, uh, uh, with Ukrainian people, but we really need now not a statement, we really need political action, humanitarian aid, and uh, if, yeah, really influencing uh, with some sanctions. So uh, I hope that uh, this petition, these initiatives will gather more and more. I sent you some uh, numbers. Uh, we have uh, many uh, professors uh, and um, heads of clinics now uh, who supported us and uh, spread it inside their uh, organizations. We have now more than 20 countries uh, where some uh, representatives appear. So we create some network of uh, doctors and uh, biomedical researchers and we try to uh, push a uh, next agenda uh, building some humanitarian programs uh, supporting uh, Ukrainian hospitals because we see that this uh, Holocaust is not stopping and uh, Ukrainian uh, economics is on zero it doesn't work so hospitals become uh, less and less supplied we see that many frontline hospitals have uh, reserves uh, for less than one, uh, one day of supplies. Uh, if some battle will appear ne near them, then they uh, will need to triage uh, and many uh, wounded victims will die just because they don't uh, have enough uh, IV solutions uh, and enough bandages and so on. Mm. So we created this Life West 5 uh, program. Yep. Yeah, and uh, also we continue to push it uh, through this network of uh, uh, signees uh, of this petition. Uh, and so now uh, some uh, uh, preparation started. We start to uh, discuss from different government organizations or different hospitals and prepare uh, some uh, cargos from there. This Life West 5, it can basically be described as a, a live document of what is mostly needed in the red and the orange zone hospitals. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we contacted hospital administrators. Uh, we have uh, some alumni in some hospitals and we gather uh, what they need. And we then discussed with several uh, military uh, surgeons and anesthesiologists to measure and to find the really minimum set of these uh, medications and uh, medical supplies. So it's like five day uh, supply for this hospital. Uh, if uh, some battle will appear near or if uh, some uh, bombing will appear, so they will receive a flood of uh, wounded victims and they need uh, this five day supply to, to uh, provide them. Uh, calling to some of these hospitals, we, uh, we see that usually they have for such supply only for one or two days, so lack of uh, IV solutions, lack of bandages, of uh, some anesthesia drugs, uh, of some antibiotics, yes. And this can be a uh, help for um, international actions and, and uh, organizations to try to provide uh, medical material to Ukraine. Yeah, really. So uh, it's help, but it's uh, for this time it's targeted help and it's measurable help. We don't see, speak about some just drugs or just uh, like uh, ibuprofen uh, or paracetamol, as we see lots of international aid with uh, directly these medications. We s speak about minimal set where everything is measured, not more than it, it is uh, important. Uh, and this pack uh, will provide uh, one operation room team for five days. So uh, any international uh, organization or government or hospital, they can d discuss with us uh, targetly at which hospital it will come. And uh, we will observe that it will come and provide this reserve exact for this uh, hospital. 
And when we talk about red zone and orange zone, this is basically frontline hospitals or hospitals close to, to the most war-torn uh, areas. Yeah, yeah, uh, close to, to uh, war, uh, war line, close to battles, and uh, the regions uh, which are uh, near these uh, zones where uh, some uh, stream of uh, wounded patients could be uh, directed or where battle can come, because now there is no front, it is very actively uh, changing, uh, very mobile uh, uh, war. So when some uh, groups of uh, war vehicles just come to some uh, um, place and then go, and uh, Ukrainian forces also move. So during the day, it could be uh, very quickly changed. But of course, there are some hospitals nearby and uh, some uh, sanitary evacuation can bring them 20, 100 of uh, wounded pa patients just uh, uh, just uh, in one day. And so the ordinary civilian hospital will be uh, uh, transformed to military one. But they are not prepared. They had not any reserves before war, and now their uh, supply is depleted. Their suppliers uh, are out of stock, and logistics uh, lo logistics is destroyed. So really, they depend on volunteers. But volunteers uh, do does not provide any systemic support. They are not doctors. They do not have access to. European uh, stocks, so uh, really we need to, to build some uh, um, international support, uh, at least for, for this, uh, uh, this problem. Mm. If we jump back to the uh, sanctions uh, quickly, mm -hmm. um, there are sanctions in place, but you want stricter sanctions or, or harsher sanctions. Can you just elaborate a little bit on that? How the sanctions you propose would hit uh, harder, so to say, than the already in place sanctions. Okay, so uh, first of all, you see that uh, existing sanctions does not work. We still have uh, war and uh, day by day we uh, have uh, hundreds of Ukrainian people killed. Uh, and um, most of them are civilians, and m many of them are children. So uh, we don't know, uh, need something which is uh, just for uh, to be named. We need something that will work. So uh, we propose uh, for, uh, to close the sky, and uh, it's uh, the proposal of our president Zelensky. We he speaks with uh, people uh, directly now because governments does not work and uh, they uh, can't make this decision. So uh, to close the sky, it may, me, may mean that to provide uh, uh, some um, war airplanes or some anti-airplane uh, systems uh, for, like SS-400 and so on. Uh, the second one is uh, from infrastructure uh, support uh, to make uh, several European banks working uh, during holidays because uh, Ukrainian volunteers uh, are trying to support uh, people uh, near uh, the siege or near battles. And it's very dynamic uh, situation when something happens and you need to provide there tomorrow. But during Saturday and Sunday, everything stops and uh, you can't uh, buy anything. Uh, during the war, when uh, hundreds of people uh, are died and, uh, and many are wounded, uh, two days of stopping is not enough. Next, of course, it, it's uh, some IT sanctions and uh, financial sanctions. We see that many things still continue uh, to work inside the Russian Federation. There are some sanctions on some banking systems, but uh, the, it is not for all banks. There are small ones, there are some uh, financial schemes that come uh, across all these uh, uh, sanctions. So really Russia continues to, to move its business uh, and many entrepreneurs uh, continue to buy everything from European Union and uh, come from Poland, uh, for example, to 
uh, to Belarus. So it's uh, the supply of war. And so uh, we need to make it stricter. And the uh, third uh, part is uh, sanctions that can be made just inside uh, biomedical community. Because it's important uh, the, uh, the um, funding from clinical trials come to uh, finance the war. Funding for the profit from selling uh, different uh, um, advertisements on congresses uh, comes uh, to support the war. Uh, it uh, funds some elites, uh, medical elites inside uh, Russian Federation uh, that, uh, of course, support the war and they uh, show that uh, Russian society continues work uh, as usual. They, uh, they, do not, uh, uh, they can't work as usual and make business as usual during Holocaust that they are creating. So uh, in this part, we ask to stop clinical trials, to stop any t educational activities and congresses with participation of uh, Russian and Belarus professors and speakers and so on, to stop accepting uh, Russian and Belarus uh, uh, articles, publications inside uh, journals. Um, that's it. Uh, it's uh, no presidents or governments need to sign any uh, um, any decision on it. Uh, it's just inner uh, decision, uh, as well as uh, accepting or not accepting PhD students, uh, postdoctoral students from Russia and Belarus. If they uh, chose the uh, uh, for root of Nazism and uh, killing civilian people, then they need to show uh, the answer from civilization. That is our uh, appeal to uh, Western democracies, and we ha hope that it will uh, that solidarity of uh, biomedical uh, colleagues will uh, act quickly and sh show their answer. Basically speaking, it's about ending cooperations between uh, Russian Belarusian uh, companies or, or universities uh, and uh, other parts of the world. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking about this like uh, stopping enrolling new patients in, in clinical trials, for instance. Is that a specific thing or is it just generally closing the cooperations? We tried to uh, to ask uh, ethical sanctions. Of course, uh, pat Russian patients inside clinical trials, they are already on some uh, treatment uh, programs. They can't stop be stopped right now. So, mm. in this case, uh, we ask to uh, to continue until the end uh, this uh, treatment of these patients. But uh, Russian clinical trial industry is huge. And it's usually uh, continuing patients. Uh, and it's huge Western money that fund uh, Russian research, part of it uh, war, and it funds uh, Russian hospitals and clinics that uh, treat uh, warriors uh, coming from Ukraine. So this uh, stream of money from clinical trials should be stopped, as well as uh, different biomedical companies of Russia, they depend on some uh, Western technologies, PCR uh, devices, uh, and so on, so on. So these devices should be stopped. This um, um, different laboratory uh, stuff should be stopped just to, uh, to stop their research uh, depending on Western uh, countries. And exchange of knowledge uh, and exchange of um, some building of new Russian uh, elite uh, for research and for uh, for healthcare. It also needs to, to be stopped. Yeah. How do you reflect over the fact that, uh, that, that you, for instance, and others in, in uh, the medical association kind of work outside the typical doctor's role here? It becomes very much politics and, 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 you know, that social engagement and, and stuff. How, how do you reflect on, on that to become so political now? You know that uh, healthcare cannot, cannot be uh, separated from politics because we depend on 
society inside of it, uh, healthcare workers and serves for it. We depend on all uh, things um, that support this healthcare. If uh, during this war many of uh, healthcare professionals uh, in Ukraine were just killed or wounded, and then we will become uh, um, they will uh, probably cannot work because of uh, wounds that they received. Many hospitals were shelled and bombed, uh, and uh, around 20 of them were just destroyed, uh, so they will no, uh, never exist again. So it's uh, the thing that uh, really uh, influences uh, Ukrainian healthcare. Many Ukrainian patients are now uh, separated from uh, medical care. For in Ukraine, unfortunately, is uh, prohibited any uh, plant uh, medic medical care. So only urgent one uh, is is conducted in uh, in hospitals. And also, all logistics is destroyed. So chronically ill patients have a huge problems getting their medications. They can't buy it uh, in pharmacies because logistics is destroyed, and they uh, usually does not. Uh, uh, receive it from government programs because it uh, also uh, very dependent on some uh, logistics and uh, warehouses of government, which uh, in not uh, in many uh, regions is just blocked. So uh, we really have a huge uh, war which ca came to healthcare, and this suffering of healthcare professionals, I hope, will be hurt by uh, European healthcare and international healthcare professionals. And this solidarity uh, needs to come into, uh, into force because as we see uh, governments of different countries uh, does not act to stop uh, this violence. Mm. Do, do you have any other message to the medical professions around the world? Mm, I just called to sign our uh, SteamGMD petition on our, our website steamgmd.org.ua uh, and then uh, to, to spread uh, this appeal to their colleagues because all who sign uh, will appear in our network and we will continue communicating, showing what is going on inside Ukraine and how uh, all our international network can uh, can support uh, medical care uh, in Ukraine and medical professions, uh, professionals providing this care. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any more uh, question here on my in my notes, but I was just thinking the, the medical association, just so I describe it correctly, it's like a, um, uh, a non-profit organization, uh, yeah. you could say, sure. and it's not like Sometimes a medical association can be like a workers' union, but it's not conducting union business. Really. No, we we are non-profit NGO officially registered. Both of us, mm -hmm. uh, Ukrainian Medical Association and Revival Institute. Uh, so we are supported by uh, donations uh, of doctors uh, of different uh, um, actors in, uh, in healthcare. Uh, industry so uh, it's not a business it's uh, like uh, uh, to, uh, trying to establish some uh, rules and some uh, working conditions for mm. uh, to, to help uh, helping doctors help your patients mm. can you just briefly tell me something about your own medical background and what you work with normally so to say like what you did before mm. the, the war and what you do now yeah, uh, I am an infection disease doctor. Uh, I had uh, some uh, practice and research uh, many years ago. Uh, my work was accepted to International Congress on SARS, uh, on the first SARS when it was in, uh, in the world. Uh, I had many trainings uh, in the United States, uh, in uh, Belgium, in uh, Egypt. Uh, I was coordinator of the uh, uh, biological threat reduction program in Ukraine, uh, where, what was uh, creating those uh, biological uh, uh, laboratories uh, in Ukraine for 
uh, securing uh, surveillance uh, against all these uh, infection diseases, uh, in, including uh, for severe infection diseases. Uh, and later I just came out of uh, practice uh, and work for, uh, as healthcare uh, management manager uh, in all our education and uh, uh, healthcare consulting uh, practice. So I consulted for candidate Zelensky. I uh, was head of different uh, think tank activities uh, for government, uh, for central government and local government and hospitals. So uh, now I more work as a consultant uh, and the business trainer uh, for uh, healthcare administrators and for, for doctors. Mm. And, and now during uh, the armed conflict, so to say, the war, where, what, what does your like, day look like? Uh, we just stopped, uh, um, our um, team just stopped our education and consulting projects and we started uh, for all our uh, for, um, daily activities to towards uh, um, supporting hospitals uh, and government in these uh, activities so we started this thing md uh, petition i write uh, many letters to my international uh, partners uh, professors uh, and uh, uh, heads of hospitals uh, have lots of teleconferences during the day, uh, if, um, ex um, explaining what is going on in Ukraine and establishing these connections for humanitarian aid. Mm -hmm. And we already uh, brought uh, one project to Ukraine, uh, one cargo for supporting uh, one hospital, and we are establishing more and more uh, of such projects, so I hope that uh, this uh, activity will uh, gather more and more support uh, in the world. Mm. Okay, thank you very much for talking to me. I, I won't uh, hold you much longer. I, I'm sure you have more important things to do as well. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's a terrible situation and I, I, I really hope the best for all of you. Uh, thank you, for, thank you uh, for your time, for your work, uh, for uh, keeping atten attention uh, of international community to uh, our situation and our victims uh, and our war that we need to stop. Mm. Thank you very much for, for your time. And uh, do uh, come back to me if you have any updates or, or there's anything you want to, to tell more. So. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, take care now. Yeah, good luck. Soon. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye.